All right. It's, it's Sunday night again. Service. Sunday night service with Danny and Dr. Motley. Woo! It's good to How see you. How are you, my friend? I am doing Haven't well. Haven't seen him all oh, week long. Look at this. It's gorgeous. How fancy. I tonight. am not I'm joking. Telling it's you. But so you know, you know, the beauty of this is you have no idea what you have on under or not underneath here. <laughs> I didn't mean that. Maybe I don't have anything on. But from a the smile. Waist Nothing down. but a smile. Yeah, from the waist down. You know, I love that. It looks so, it's so great. The pattern, I'm not kidding. It's just like. Thank you. Great. I got that in Atlanta yesterday when I went for mm -hmm. my, you know. So we're talking depression tonight, guys, here. Um, happy communion. Remember, guys, Remember. to click your heart buttons and your thumbs up to know that you're here and you're listening oh. in. Click your heart. Tell us you're here. Bonnie, I'm glad you're here. Leslie, Julie, Julie. yay, guys. All right. Click your heart buttons. Click your likes. And um, we are talking about depression tonight. Oh, yeah. A very serious serious subject. Yes, so. Anybody who's ever been depressed um, knows that this is not something to monkey around with. Mm -hmm. And I think that we over treat it. But I, I do want you to know that this is in no way anything that we share tonight. We are not saying go stop your antidepressant, right? Mm -hmm. Go stop your benzodiazepine for anxiety, go, we're not saying stop anything. I am simply going to be sharing, and he is what the literature says, what the actual research says about antidepressants. Mm -hmm. We will be discussing tonight this book also, A Mind of Your Own from Kelly Brogan, one of the greatest books I have ever read really? on depression. She Ooh. is a psychiatrist. Really? She yeah. was, she undergrad was at MIT. Her graduate school was at Cornell about six or seven years ago when she really started digging deep into the literature about depression, yep. she stopped writing all antidepressants for her patients. Wow. And it is fascinating. Her website, kellybroganmd.com is hands down the most comprehensive website I have ever found on depression. Oh, and anxiety and free, free stuff everywhere. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah, so once you get on here, click your like buttons. Tell us where you're from. Hi, Amber. Hello, Margo. Mm -hmm. Happy belated birthday, Margo. So that being said, we are not telling you to stop your antidepressants whatsoever. No, no. All right, mm -hmm. but I just want you to know. So when I was digging into all of this, while people are getting logged on, I'll share some statistics. You know, anxiety and depression. Many times, hi Ella, sweet Ella. It's good to see you. Um, um, anxiety and depression go hand in hand many times, mm -hmm. right? Nearly one half of those diagnosed with depression are also diagnosed with an anxiety disorder. Okay. Nearly half, right? Wow. So as you can see, I mean, they're hand in hand. Now for me, I went through a season of depression, situational depression. I was getting a divorce and I went through, I mean, I, I went through depression and a psychiatrist at Vanderbilt put me on Prozac. Really? Uh, yeah, and I and it didn't work. No, I'm sorry. I was first put on Effexor or Lexapro. I can't remember. Lexapro seems to be what it was. I think killed my sex drive. Had all these side effects to it. And then I was put on Prozac. You know, and I've been on Prozac twice, wow. two different times. Really? Both times know. for six. Yeah. Um, now what I know about depression and what I know about root causes and things like that, I probably probably wouldn't have taken it. Mine was situational though. I haven't been depressed in years. I haven't been on anything. I mean, the last thing I was on was St. John's wort. But have you ever struggled with depression? Um, I've not 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 that I've I've had anxiety from Lyme, but I hadn't had a whole bunch of depression. But yeah. I I mean I can see I've had a lot of patients that come in with depression, but I've had few depressive thoughts. So I think that. I was, okay, so the last year uh, of Lyme, I did have somebody who was a counselor who was a friend of mine said, I think you're suffering from depression at the, towards the tail end, and I didn't realize that I, right. I had that. Right. So that's, that's one thing. Well, it's interesting. I mean, the research is really something on it. So, you know, we have major depressive disorder, mm -hmm. right? So it's the leading cause of disability in the United what? States for ages 15 to 44. That's not a Leading cause of disability. Um, wow, women wow. more than men t affected t twice as twice as many times as men, right? One in four women of childbearing age are on psychotropic medications. One in four. 11% of the adult population in America is on uh, psychotropic medications. Wow. And these are just the women that we know about, right? Wow. I mean, there's probably, there's many more that we don't know about. 
you know that greater than 30 million Americans are on an antidepressant? 30 million. Out so listen to this. Yeah. This is fascinating. In the 25 years since Prozac has been approved by the FDA, we've had multiple, you know, antidepressants, um, SSRIs, SNRIs, things like that released to help with depression, mm -hmm. right? Multiple, mm -hmm. multiple. Yet we are more depressed and we are more anxious than we have ever been in the history of the United States, right? Mm -hmm. And we're more over medicated than ever. Oh, wow. All right. Wow. So where's the disconnect is what I was thinking today. You know, where's the disconnect? What's going on? We've got more people on antidepressants than we've ever had ever yet. We have more depression, more suicide than we've ever had. So Kelly Brogan, who wrote this book, this is fascinating. She dug, deep into the literature. Like she's Yale trained. She went to school at Yale. Yeah. Kelly went to school at Yale. No, Kelly went to Cornell. That's right. Aviva Rome went to Yale. Kelly went to Cornell and MIT, right? So she dug deep in the, to the literature. She did not find one study. There's not one single study in the liter literature that proved that depression is caused by a chemical imbalance in the brain. There's not one study saying that. And wow. I read all through this book saying it's a serotonin deficiency, wow. right? Depression is a symptom. She says it is a red flag that something is off balance mm. or ill in the body that needs to be remedied. And page two talks all about this lifestyle factors are number one are the very first thing to always look at when you have a depressed or an anxious oh. patient. Right? Lifestyle factors. Lifestyle factors. So we're going to talk all about that. Wow. But I want to read this while people are logging on. Guys, press your like button and all. If you're on, tell us where you're from. Yes, Amber, Lyme anxiety is terrible. But I want to read this here. While it is well documented that multiple forces, such as a tragic life event or a fallout from hormonal shifts, like going through menopause, can trigger symptoms labeled and treated as depression, uh, no one has explained the potential for antidepressants to irreversibly disable the body's natural healing mechanisms. Despite what you've been led to believe, antidepressants have repeatedly been shown in the literature in long-term scientific studies, these are randomized double-blind trials, mm -hmm. to worsen the course of mental illness. Now, wow. this is in the literature. Wow. This is not just her saying this. To say nothing of the risks of liver damage, abnormal bleeding, weight gain, sexual dysfunction, reduced cognitive, cognitive function um, that they entail. The dirtiest little secret of all is the fact that antidepressants are among the most difficult drugs to taper from. Uh, and I have seen that firsthand yeah. every single Stop. month in that office, right? Stop. They are di more difficult than alcohol and opiates to taper yeah. from. While you might call it going through withdrawal, we medical professionals have been instructed by big pharma to call it discontinuation syndrome, which is characterized by fiercely debilitating physical and psychological reactions. And anyone who's ever tried to taper off or stop an antidepressant or a benzodiazepine can tell you hands down that um, it is very it is difficult. It's the hardest thing, one of the hardest things to do. Yes, it is. Yes. So major depressive disorder affects more than 16.1 million, 16 million adults or 6.7% of the U.S. population wow, age 18 actually. Wow. in any given year, wow, wow. right? While major depressive disorder can develop at any age, the median age is 32.5 years. 32. So that ought to tell you, so what is that about? I mean, I don't know. Like the 32.5. Is that when people are getting married? No, I'm joking. I'm sorry. That's, they are she getting said, married over. Sorry. That. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was depressed when I was married. I, I, I lifted out of my deal. depression when I got out of that. Oh, my Lord. It's, it's more prevalent in, men, in women than it is men, of course. All right. Persistent depressive disorder or PDD, which is formally called dysthymia, right? Just a flat, is a form of depression that usually continues for at least two years, wow, right? Wow. It affects approximately 1.5% of the U.S. population, age 18 and older, right? About 3.3 million adults. Only 61% of adults with major depressive disorder are receiving treatment of any kind. Oh, wow. Okay. Right? Um, and this all came from the National Institute of Mental Health. Those, those did. 
So, I mean, it's fascinating. What do you see about the person? I think about and, the 32 and a half years, yeah. I, I would say that most of the individuals that come to the office, I have seen that when they experience depression or anxiety, it is around the 34 to 35 years age range. Age range. And I remember going to a few seminars, guys, about how the liver detoxes, of how, how serotonin is broken down and, and uh, dopamine. Yeah. And they said that most people like your body, I need to look into it more, but they're talking about how at that age range, yep. that's when you start to feel your age. Like that's when your body can't readily absorb all the B vitamins and the ah, we're talk about these. from your food because yep. it goes into that guy, thing, guys, where you're young, really, and you can absorb everything. You can tear apart food. Uh, but yeah. You get older, and then all of a sudden, you're not able to absorb. And they say around that age, time, at that time, that's why you start to feel depressed. It's like because you're not putting those vitamins back into your system. That's what I mean. That's what exactly. I found sometimes. Exactly. Well, yeah. we've spent decades by that point destroying, oh, destroying the body. Yeah. Destroying completely. the gut, eating whatever exactly. we want. Excuse me. Packaged, processed, bagged, canned, tubed, fake food. Not taking care of yourself. Running going, you know, balls to the wall mm, all okay. day, every day, which we still continue to do. You know, I mean, we've spent decades destroying ourselves yeah. and not being able to rebuild and not taking the time to, um, to heal. It's interesting because I was going to say this at the end, but Taroni Lodog, Dr. Lodog, who is a Lakota um, Indian, she okay. was raised on okay. the Lakota reservation in, um, New, I don't know if she's raised in New Mexico or Arizona, but anyway, she's a medical doctor. She discusses depression as a symptom of not facing the darkness in our life with openness. Whoa, okay. Man. So now think about this guys. Don't, don't get upset about this. Cause the first time that I read this, I was like, Oh, I don't know about this. So depression is a symptom of not facing the darkness in our life with openness, right? We need to balance this. Mm -hmm. We are not very open to sitting with the pain. Mm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, when I was going through a divorce, I remember Rodney Yee, who's a yoga instructor, he told me, he said, Danny, you have to sit with the pain one layer at a time, mm -hmm. right? You have to feel it. Yeah. You have to sit with it. Yeah. She says, we're not open to doing this, right? We have zero tolerance for su suffering in our culture, Okay. right? We are a culture of fast and easy cures, Yes. right? We have a premium on coasting coasting and surviving and all focus is on the future, right? We're not living in the present mm -hmm. right here, right now. We keep saying one day I will, one day I will, one day I'll, you know, feel better. One day this, we aren't right here. We're mm -hmm. not living here, right? We're not willing to sit with the pain or deal with the darkness. Now, I'm not saying that and don't, don't send me nasty emails or any of this, but I mean, she said this, but I agree with this. Uh, I, I agree with this. I now the Indians, I'm telling you, like the Indians, the Lakota, the Cher those Indians, they, they know about this stuff. I love Indian medicine and that kind of thing. She says we are overdiagnosed and overtreated mm -hmm. as women and men. Oh. Right. And I, I find that, Kelly Brogan says that as well. Depression is a symptom. It's not a disease or a diagnosis. It is a symptom that something is off balance. Mm -hmm. I agree. And it was for me. <laughs> I, mean, I, do. I think that uh, when you, when they talk about the future, I remember one of the, um, uh, one of my, I'll say friends, but people, I'm, uh, one of my colleagues, I guess that I know that was actually became a medicine man for one of the tribal. Are you serious? Yeah, like for the Midwest. And he said that one of their practices was that, um, like depression and anxiety when somebody got depressed they said in the tribe that they would say that a person could look at an event for three times but on the third time you had to turn around and walk away and let it go so yeah. if something made you depressed let uh, it, you had go. To let it go after the third time then the rest of the individuals would not recognize your sadness or your depression because they said you're not letting it go because it's controlling you so they thought you know what's wrong you need to accept it and let it go so they would go away from that. That's that's really interesting. But it's true, like the whole idea that when we look into the future is that we're basing everything now on expectations and assumptions about an event in our brain. And so we assume something or we expect something and that takes us out of our true alignment and shifts us over to trying to harmonize with an idea 
that's not really what we want. And so we get depressed about that. But I really, I do. I, what's her low dog? Is that her Dr. name? Dr. Low Dog. You don't know Taroni Low Dog? Holy I, moly. I I've seen her speak multiple times. She is wow. fascinating. She's written multiple books. I could get to them, but Harlan's licking my leg down here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, um, Life is Your Best Medicine is one of my all-time favorite books that she wrote. But she is a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant provider. So, you know, so here's the thing. What do you do? Lots of you have... Um, providers, healthcare providers, doctors, nurse practitioners, what have you. You know, what are you going to do? I can't tell you how fast a doctor or a healthcare provider wants to prescribe Zoloft yeah. or an antidepressant. Yeah. I mean, if you've had that experience as a woman or as a man, just click your button, click your mad, angry button or your heart button. I mean, because maybe it's a good thing for you. Yeah, absolutely. So I just think you're depressed. You know, let's try some Zoloft. Yeah. I hear this all the time, not saying it is horrible for everyone. But what I'm saying is it, as a rule, is not the answer. It is not a Prozac deficiency going on in your body, yeah, right? Exactly. Many times it is a thyroid dysfunction. It is a B12 dysfunction because if you don't have the proper B vitamins, yeah, yeah. right, or yes. iron, right, or, or vitamin D or magnesium, then you are more likely to have a, a depressive um disorder or depressive be depressed right so what are you going to do so if you got your pen and pad right what what testing do you need to have tested your thyroid your thyroid the thyroid controls the metabolic function in mm -hmm. your body right yes so it can control how fast or how slow your metabolism goes it is directly related many times with depression mm -hmm. right and anxiety anxiety you bet for both yes. so you're yes. going to check the the six labs that i would recommend you check are a tsh of course thyroid stimulating hormone mm -hmm. a free t3 free t3 and a free t4 this is how much circulating circulating t3 and t4 are hormone you have in your blood yes I would check your thyroid antibodies, Ooh, right, yep. for Hashimoto's because a very big um, side effect of Hashimoto's is anxiety and depression, mm -hmm. right? And then a reverse T3, right? Reverse so T3. if you are under a tremendous amount of stress in your body, um, you're going to convert that T3 over to re reverse T3, which is actually inactive. And if that is really high, then we know, uh oh, we need to bring down the stress level. We need to change some things, maybe, you know, give you a little bit of T3 or something like that. But a TSH, a free T3, a free T4, thyroid antibodies, thyroid globulin antibody, thyroid peroxidase antibody, and a reverse T3. Those are the thyroid are the hormones thyroid you hormones. need to check. And then you need to check a B12, right? Yes. B12 is very important for uh, brain health, inflammation, right? Inflammation. And I would always suggest that I find that uh, when we talk with depression, uh, last week we talked about how if serotonin can get involved, you can have anxiety with high amounts of serotonin that get involved. And also dopamine, if you have low amounts of dopamine, you'll have depression. But that all the literature states that, and then we see it in office too, that when you have B6s, uh, P5P, pyridoxal 5-phosphate, which yep. is a form of B6, mm -hmm. B12, mm -hmm. sometimes zinc and magnesium. Mm -hmm. And I find that B2s really, and you, you always have to find the B vitamins that work yes. for you. Yes. And it, and it does vary. I would have to say by brand, guys, that when you take, we, we shoot to give you good brands to take. You bet. But I want you guys to know that when we give you something, if something doesn't feel, not that it's not right, if it doesn't feel like it's working for the no. best, you may want to try Change. a different brand. Change brands. That's but right. B vitamins are crucial. The same with your healthcare provider. If you find a healthcare provider's not working right for you, then change healthcare providers. That's true. I mean, for crying out loud, this is your health. If they're not working for you, then move, move on. Yes. Find somebody else. But I was actually at a patient's house today um, for lunch, we were going over some, some medical things at first, and she has this from her provider in, or one of her providers in um, Colorado, uh, Be Active. This is my favorite. This is the one I have at the office, and one. I did not know about this one until Chad Yarbrough had started another patient of mine on it, and she said, Danny, this is way better than your B Supreme, <laughs> and I've been using it, and it is fantastic. It is all methylated B vitamins, yeah. and I 
and then your plain old sublingual B12. I mean, just flat up B12. Oh, yeah, yeah, look at right here. That's yeah. the one I use. I love that one. It's high dose, 5,000 micrograms, five milligrams of B12. I love it. So you're gonna check a B12, your thyroid function test. You're gonna check a fasting glucose, mm -hmm. insulin, fasting insulin, and a hemoglobin A1C. We know through studies that um, blood sugar imbalances are huge in depression and anxiety, yeah, exactly. right? And they always say that whenever you have depression, anxiety, that we recommend, remember, inositol, yes. B12, anything yes. with cortisol imbalance and thyroid support is going to change your sugar intake. And why yes. we recommend that is because if you balance your sugar, you balance your adrenals, that's definitely going to affect your noradrenaline, nor norepinephrine, and adrenaline levels, and it's going to help you with depression. That's, that's why exactly we give you inositol. Right. That's right. Vitamin D3 huge Ooh. for depression, mm. right? It's a hormone. It's a hormone. It's not just, you know, it's a hormone. It needs to be checked. Magnesium. And it's a magnesium red blood cell, magnesium RBC. I get magnesium levels checked all the time. Or I, I look at labs and they've checked the wrong magnesium. Mm. Mm. But magnesium RBC is what's in the blood cells and the red blood cells. Do you know that 80% of all depressed patients have a magnesium deficiency? 80%. Wow. Dr. Dennis Goodman that. taught me that, that um, in his book, um, Magnificent you Magnesium. 80%. But 70% of the United States population has a magnesium deficiency. 70%. I, I believe that. Honey, a great magnesium. I mean, just a really good magnesium that ends in eight, A-T-E. I'm a big fan of glycinate, chel glycinate chelate mm -hmm. magnesium. I like Zymogen's OptiMag. Um, Metagenics makes a good one. This is the one I use. About 300 milligrams, anywhere between 300 to 1,200 milligrams of magnesium. You've got to totally, find your sweet spot. You do have to find your sweet spot. Right? Completely agree. I think you know that there in literature we've been reading, we've talked about it that magnesium can take place in over 20,000 different reactions in the body. Now I'm telling you, magnesium, you've got to find the sweet spot. You've got to find the where you can go. Like we would take magnesium tarates, we could have glycinates, we can have aspartates, but you do have to find the form Malate, that works for three you. And eight, you name it. It will work, yeah. I'm telling you. And most people are eight. deficient. They yeah. really are. If you're constipated, use, you know, citrate, citrate um, or oxide. That'll help you poop. But oh, yeah. I, we want to get this into the cells. So a, a Magnesium good, Miracle is a book. Yeah, magnesium. well, that's Dr. Uh, Brooklyn. Dr. Uh, Goodman wrote that book. And he may be on here tonight, Dr. Goodman, if you're on. I was texting him before. Um, actually, he is wanting to um, come into Franklin and do a live workshop on July the 19th. Whoa. Yeah. Look at her. <laughs> Woo. Just so me anyway, love. yeah. Okay. So anyway. We're going to check your thyroid. We're going to check a B12. We're going to check your fasting glucose, insulin, hemoglobin A1C, looking at your fat, your blood sugar levels, right? Mm -hmm. Vitamin D3, magnesium. Homocysteine and MTHFR Ooh, yeah. are big ones, right? We're yeah. looking at inflammation and we're looking at a methylation blockage over here with MTHFR which is associated with depression many times or heart disease. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't always start off with an MTHFR, but um, I just assume everyone has an MTHFR mutation. And if you don't know what we're talking about, we have a whole Sunday night service on MTHFR. You can go back and look in the, um, in the archived videos. But these are the tests that I think, and that Dr. Brogan and actually Dr. Lodog and Dr. Aviva Rome all think that's what we check. Yeah. Do you have anything to add to that? I, I love uh, MTHFR methylation yes. uh, groups. I think that in the office, what we do find is that um, we find that SAMI will work for people. But when we check for MTHFR, uh, anytime oh, Sammy's that, right here. Sammy, if anybody that has Sammy. depression or anxiety, the first thing that I check is going to see, again, serotonin and dopamine levels. But how the body can take the B vitamins we're talking about, guys. So if you intake a B vitamin, a B12, a B9, a B1, B2, we're just asking your body. We're wanting to find out if your body can take that B vitamin and assimilate it. Right. And take it and then activate your SAMe. That's what it's supposed to do. And the SAMe can do a couple of things. But remember, the SAMe is going to go down into your cells and help jostle that cell to actually help absorb more vitamin D. And if that can happen, both SAMe and vitamin D will go then help your body do what? Break down and metabolize serotonin and dopamine and adrenaline and noradrenaline. 
in proper levels, which means you won't have as much ADD, ADHD, obsessive compulsive, anxiety, depression. So when we find your B12s, that's what we're trying to do. And MTHFR and MTRR mm -hmm. is the markers that we're trying to look for. That's when right. We do that. That's right. So this is the testing that I do in the office. And then eventually, I don't do it right off the top most of the time, looking at cortisol levels, Ooh, yeah. salivary cortisol levels, looking at your, um, during the day and during the evening, your cortisol levels, which is your stress hormones, right? Mm -hmm. What are your levels that you like to see for your patients like in the mornings and like your well, ideal, like what would you like to see? Well, I mean, it, it, there's a range. So, you know, your cortisol is going to be the highest in the morning that it is in 24 hours. And then it drops down at lunch, mm -hmm. gets lower at dinner, is the lowest it's going to be at bedtime. So I don't know those numbers off the top because they come from the, the spit test people. ZRT is who we use. But we want that right dead center in the curve is where you want it, right? Mm -hmm. You don't want it too high. You don't want it too low at all. Um, so I usually do that after we've started with lifestyle, after we've done an elimination diet. I don't do that right off the top okay. and I don't do a stool study right off the top, but a, a PCR stool study. I have a little lisp. I, I've got two teeth missing back here. What? An implant, Yeah, an implant broke. Yeah, you don't want to know. There's no teeth back here in the back. So I keep lisping and I apologize. I don't it's even just, notice it. Oh, yes, yes. It's very difficult. Oh, it's hard to deal oh, with. So anyway, my right. implants are gone and there's no teeth there. And I look like, well, anyway. Your bad. Whole stuff. Anyway, stool study. A, a good stool study where you poop, scoop, send it off. We do a three-day stool study. I don't do a one-day. We do three days. So you're more likely to catch parasites, bacteria, mm -hmm. candida. A stool study will tell you, you know, do you have too much bad bacteria, not enough good, or, you know, are, are you optimal on your hormone or on your um, bacteria? Do you have, you know, um, what kind of enzymes do you have in there? Are you chewing your food properly? Mm -hmm. It tells you, do you have, you know, um, infections? Do you have yeast? I, I mean, I mean, that's huge. Candida is a big deal, yeah, right? And completely. so, yeah, wow. so then we do a stool study and we treat that. So, this is how we get started. That's how, you know, we look at, of course, the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to, you know, talk about your diet. Mm -hmm. You've got to do an elimination diet. No sugar, mm -hmm. no gluten, no dairy. Hands down. Those Hands are the down. top three. I mean, you've gluten, got to cut those out. Sugars and dairies. Yes. Okay. Right. Yes. But the top seven inflammatory foods in the country are gluten, dairy, soy, corn, sugar, eggs and peanuts but i'm telling you right now the three white devils you have got to get out you know. of your diet hands down we have to do that it has to be a whole fresh mediterranean style diet exactly period and i i mean that's the first that's the first step period first before step. you start a bunch of supplements before you do boom. anything you have got I'm to get if you don't heal the gut first i will go to my grave preaching this and i have for nine that's, years that's and now we're seeing more and more and more not that i was so above ahead of the curve but you know um people who do what we do know if you don't heal the gut there's no shortcut no, to this. No, because I mean, then you all can't we're doing take is enough adding. supplements to fix a exactly. bad diet. I say it over and over again. You've got to change the diet. You have to do an elimination diet. You've got to get your thyroid optimal, mm -hmm. right? You have to, right? You have to get your B12 and your hormones. So the hormones are something else. I look at estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, DHEA. Mm -hmm. Those are big deals. Women going through menopause, mm -hmm. holy moly. I see a lot of foggy headedness and depression and anxiety at this. And I'm, I'm right there. I mean, I'm not depressed and I don't have anxiety, but I have had foggy headed. And as soon as I get my hormones optimal, boom, that goes away. Wow. Goes it away. Goes away. Don't let anybody hands. tell you, you don't need hormones. Right now we, again, don't send me emails saying, you know, my mom's got triple negative breast cancer and all this. I'm talking in a perfect world where you can have hormones and all, you know, you've got to get your hormone. We weren't designed to be hormone deficient. No, not right? at all. We weren't designed to be depressed. You know, you have to know that you're not broken. You are not broken. If you don't hear anything from this whole stinking thing tonight, you've got to know that as a human being, you're not broken. That's exactly right. And I think when we have talked about uh, just the foods and how yes. the foods affect diet and how the food affects the gut and affects the mind and affects the neurotransmitters. Yeah. 
I am so surprised that even with the testing we've done on me, but I've had testing done on patients where they come in and something as simple as eggs. I've seen people yes. with mood issues and dopamine issues that have literally changed 80%. I am not joking, guys. 80% of their problems by just getting rid of – not. I'm not picking on eggs. I'm just saying like getting rid of eggs or you getting bet. rid of dairy. Like to the point where – we've tested different ways with kinesiology to say, you know, and they finally needed a blood test. They needed to see that in their minds and see it in their life. But just from that doing to their gut, I'm like, and I, it's hard to see a patient guys when you, we all do. And I'm saying we all have a sense of addictions to foods mm -hmm. and you see it with your patient and you're like, there's a want and a why. Why do you want to keep eating it? Some people want to give it up, but they want to go back to it. But I'm no, like, you can't go you, back to you it don't and want you to go can't back. cheat. There are no cheat days. I was listening yeah. to JJ Virgin yet yesterday on a, on a webinar, and she said, I hate cheat days, and I hate moderation, you know, like everything in moderation. There is no gluten in moderation. There is no dairy in moderation. There is no sugar in moderation. No. There, there is, is no supposed to be no sugar, no gluten, no dairy, if you're trying to heal the body. No. Now, not everybody has a sensitivity to dairy. You know, they don't. So maybe some people can eat some raw dairy. You know, I don't know that answer, but I'm telling you, there's not anybody who needs gluten and sugar in their diet. No. And, and, and we, gluten is way easier to get rid of than anything else, in my opinion. And I find Sugar and dairy are very difficult. Yes. And, and you crave, listen, people, you crave what it is you're sensitive to. Exactly right. You I crave do. cheese. I crave cheese. It makes me, I crave cheese and I am so sensitive to it. And every time I eat it, my hands swell up like little big fat sausages. <laughs> and this, oh, it hurts so bad. I mean, I you do crave, you crave what, you, what you're sensitive to, you right? Do, you so do. remember that. Okay, we got to get moving here. So, all right, we're going to test for all of that that we talked about. You've got that. We've got to make sure your food intolerances are taken care of, your hormones and your B12. You've got to decrease stress in your life, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Exercise, get outside, meditate. These are big deals right here. Definitely. Get your feet on the earth and your face to the sun. This book right here. Do you Earthing. have this book? I do. Oh my word. This Love book it. is unbelievable on, on getting the energy from the earth, right? The energy from the sun, the negative ions and all of the great, just the energy and the healing powers of getting yourself on the earth. On the earth. On the earth. On the earth. May the 11th, I have made a date with two friends of mine where we are getting ourselves on the earth at her house and we are going to be earthing all morning long. Oh, We're going to be laying on the earth, getting our face in the sun. I'm so excited. But I mean, I do it every day. I sat out there for an hour and a half this afternoon and had my feet on the ground and worked on this. But this is a big, big deal. And you have to, I, I apologize, Harlan is snoring like crazy. Yes, he is, Harlan. Oh, he's not happy about any of this. He's not depressed. He's not sad. Yeah, look at him. Cut, he's cutting his eyes over here. All right. Before we get into supplements, you know, we're changing things. We're changing the diet. We're changing the situation in our life. We're changing the way we think about things, mm -hmm. right? Maybe we're even saying, you know, I'm going to sit with this pain a little bit. Yeah. Maybe it's okay to be a little bit depressed right now because I know I wasn't born this way, yeah. right? Something happened. Let me investigate and say, okay, what shifted? Why am I depressed? Mm -hmm. What's going on? We don't dig deep and figure out what's the root cause, right? Why? Why? You know, Why? and Why? let's figure let's figure it out. But she says, and I say this too, because I tell patients all the time, pay attention to the little symptoms that creep up. Your body tells you, you did not go. Water does not go from uh, sitting on the stove to boiling like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, it has to simmer yep. for a while before it boils over. That's a good analogy. That's the, That's really, I mean, that pretty good. That's really it, good I'm actually. pretty good sometimes. That's really it good. is the same with us. We don't just boil over into depression no, or anxiety. Pay attention to what it is that's leading up to this. And then I challenge you to uh, fix that. Oh, completely. fix that. Yes. No yes. matter what that is, right? Because you were not born depressed. Please remember that you're not born broken and you're not broken. Even if you're on an antidepressant, you're not broken. We can fix this. 
You can. Uh, right? You can fix it up. And just the simple fact that when you, even if you're in an environment that is very stressful emotionally yes. and stress-wise at work, but I've seen, and I know she has seen too, is that if you do supplement with, like we're talking about B6s and B12s and the yes. B vitamins and magnesium and zinc, you'll see quite a bit of results. Oh, the yeah, reason being, it's, it's like it's like emptying, guys. It's like we don't want you. We talk about meditate and walk. We don't want you to stay in a stressful environment. We're not saying that. We're saying that if you can empty your cup a bit. You bet. A bit where yes. you can let go of some of that stress, then maybe it opens up a little bit more where you can – handle more stress in the meantime where you develop your life and you go what do I need to get rid of what do I need to take on to help the stress that's right amen to that yeah. so somebody said will you put a list of the supplements yes so if you've got um, if you've got a um, piece of uh, pen and paper we're gonna start talking right now curcumin one of my all-time favorites Ooh, right that's a great this is an too. anti Gaius curcumin I absolutely love now I love metagenics has a new one by the way they have one called Inflavonoid Intensive Care, and it's got Boswellia in it, frankincense, yeah. and pip, pep, piperine, and ginger in it. And ginger's great. But curcumin, a high-dose curcumin, right, which is, you know, curcumin is the, um, it's the most active polyphenol that's in turmeric, yes. right? So it's extremely active. It is very powerful, about 500 to 1,000 milligrams of curcumin twice a day, okay? Okay. Um, there, I did not know this until this weekend. There's been over 7,000 studies to date on the power of curcumin. 7,000. 7, it is nature's anti-inflammatory and antioxidant and neuroprotectant, right? Neuro Protecting the brain. It's safe to use while on other antidepressants as well as while nursing, okay? multiple double-blinded randomized trials on this, on the efficacy of curcumin. If you, you can start that, you can start the Gaia Professional Solutions brand, love it, or the Metagenics, but also add in curcumin to your diet, right? Completely. I don't have any here, or turmeric, you would add turmeric in. Um, it is bright orange and it looks like ginger because it's a cousin to ginger, yeah. right? So it looks like ginger. Slice it into your stir fries, put it in your smoothies, do whatever it is you need to do. Now it will stain everything in its way. Uh -huh. I mean, use a separate cutting board and all, otherwise you're going to have everything orange. But curcumin, 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 anti-inflammatory and an antidepressant. I mean, it works to curcumin decrease inflammation in the brain because uh -huh. we know that depression is a symptom of inflammation, right? Truly. And on the... Every time we suggest turmeric and curcumin, it basically just think about this. The, what we're trying to aim for is that if your cell walls have been injured from all the, like you said, from going from steadily increasing inflammation, what does inflammation do? Injures a cell wall. You bet. We give you curcumin you bet. to heal the cell wall so that when we give you B vitamins and nutrients, it goes across the cell wall. Yes. And you absorb it better and you can absorb it and you'll feel the effects faster. Yes. Yes, that's correct. Fish oil, curcumin number one. Let's go to fish oil. Woo. One of the greatest anti-inflammatories, anti, um, it's neuroprotectant as well. It decreases inflammation all over the body and the brain. Yep. Up to 2.5 grams or more a day. This is 2.5 here. Oh, I forgot. I was going to show you something. Okay, hold that. Yep, yep. All right. Fish oil, fish oil, fish oil, at least 2.5 grams a day, as well as you can use evening primrose oil. Right? Really? Yeah. 500 to 1,000 milligrams twice a day. All right? I evening primrose. Evening fish, I do too. Evening primrose works great for your hormones, for your, if you have breast tenderness as well. Look, i got a surprise for you. I totally what? forgot. All right, guys. What? What? This what? fish oil from Designs for Health we just got in. This is high dose liquid fish oil. you got to taste this. Okay. This is the best stuff I, I have ever used. If you have a sweet tooth, it's unbelievable. This is 2,000 milligrams what? of fish oil. This is citrus sorbet. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, wow. Mm. Listen, people, those of you that have used this, this is okay. absolutely fantastic. Is this not amazing? It's like sherbet. Oh, yeah. I know. It's orange. It's citrus sorbet. It is absolutely phenomenal. That's it's really from Designs good. for Health. Absolutely. We've got it at the office now, That's and really it comes amazing. in lime as well. And lime is excellent, but this is like a push-up. 
Okay, right? It's like, like a push-up. That's like exactly push what it is. I know. Tastes just like a push-up. Uh, and if you got a little sweet tooth, just eat some fish oil. How amazing is wow, that? Wow. And you got two thousand gram or two grams of fish oil right there. That is amazing. And what we just did. Wow. All right, turmeric, right? Fish oil, evening primrose oil, the probiotics. Well, we know that if you don't, that the microbiome, right? 90% of all serotonin in our body is located in the exactly. small intestine. It's not in the brain. So when you have a really good probiotic in there with really great lactobacillus or bifidobacterium, um, it's going to start cultivating all of that in the gut. This is called the microbiome. So as you heal the gut, you begin to heal the brain. A really good probiotic and take your probiotic when you go to bed at night totally. right because your body heals at night it heals at night when yeah eat it. and a probiotic is going to work on many things not just depression i mean it works on you know inflammation and getting you pooping better getting you sleeping better i mean you need a good probiotic ideally you'd be getting all of this from your food yeah, totally. but not everybody is you're a kimchi eater i grew up in gilbertsville kentucky i'm not a kimchi eater so but there that being said can. That's take, cool. take your probiotics. Take you your get, probiotics. You get good biotics in your gut. Remember, all the toxins we get in our gut, that when we get take good bacteria, think of them as the good army and that you put them in your gut and they're, out to, they're the cleaning crew. That's exactly right. They're the cleaning crew. And so they help out and they also produce enzymes to help absorb food or digest foods uh, according to our body types. So, yes, you're right. Kimchi and uh, sauerkraut and probiotics. Yeah, they pickled everything. St. <laughs> John's wort. This is one of my all-time favorites right here. Now, I've used this twice the last five years, okay. right? St. John's wort has more studies on it than pretty much anything out there herbal-wise. Herbal it's got numerous really good randomized studies on it that shows okay. it works better, at least as good or better than a placebo and Prozac. Do you, how much, like when you have a patient come in, would you use it a lot, quite a bit? I mean, oh yeah. Like oh yeah. 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 300 milligrams, wow. two to three times a day. All right. So what was actually studied is 900 milligrams a day. I have found that people will not take a pill four times or three times a day. Yeah. So this one that I use from Metagenics has also got folate and B12 in it. I mean, this is the best one that I have ever used. And I'm telling you, it works. This is 450 milligrams twice a day, St. John's wort. I don't run out of this at the office because when you do, people go a little bit crazy, crazy on me. It. Yeah, they don't want you running out of this. St. John's wort, one of the best you can use for depression yeah, what, and it patient. works beautifully. I mean, I've, I personally can attest to it. I've used it twice and you don't have to taper off of it. Like I started it and then I stopped it and I was fine. Oh, that's good. Yeah. I need to start think, looking at that. Yeah. yeah you that. need to use St. John's work. And then of course, Sam E, which you've already talked about. Oh, Sam E, right? Sam. 400 to Sam. 600 milligrams a day, 400 to 600 milligram or 1600 milligrams a day. Okay. Love it's a naturally occurring molecule. We know that and in the body, right? But it's a precursor to so many other biomolecules, right? I mean, you know that. And he's already talked about Sam E with us, but um, it's been used in Europe for depression for three decades. I didn't know that until today. It's, it's pretty right. Pretty it pretty works. Crazy. Numerous double blind studies in the United States have, have proven its efficacy for depression. Wow. And that's something. It is. It also works for chronic pain. Like fibromyalgia pain. Well, it, it sure is. does. One of our big days, SAMe and glutathione are two of the biggest things that your body you need to produce and need to recurringly produce. And I'm telling you, SAMe, SAMe not only helps with the depression, but it also helps things with allergies. Like it'll yes. help break down allergies and such. Yes. So, yes. This is a great brand. Yeah, we used to, yeah, I like that one. A B complex. So this is really interesting. In 2010, there was a study at Rush University showed that more, more than 3,500 adults and with a higher intakes of B5, B9, and B12 were associated with a decreased likelihood of depression for up to 12 years oh, follow-up, right? Wow. And wow. increased additions of, if they added in extra 10 milligrams of B6 and 10 micrograms of B12, they, there was a 2% decreased risk of depressive symptoms per year, right? Mm -hmm. And they were using the methyl forms, right, of, yeah. of um, Bs. 
a good B complex, which we've got over there mm -hmm. somewhere. Mm -hmm. And then your minerals, right? Your basic minerals, magnesium, zinc, copper, selenium, poor Harlan, good Lord bless his heart, iodine, right? Your basic minerals, a good, I know, man. I wish I could sleep like that. I mean, just right in the middle of anything, go stay on the sleep. Oh, I mean, I'm sorry, we're not fancy in a big studio or anything, so we've got the dogs in here. That's we got right, good, right? the good. sirens and all that kind of stuff. But basic minerals, right? Again, even if you don't do this selenium and the zinc and all that, if you're getting that from your food, at least 300 milligrams of magnesium a day. Mm -hmm. 300 to 1200 and if you're going above 300 I many times or 500 I have patients split it up maybe you know 500 at dinner and then 500 when they go to bed yes because magnesium will ca cause you to be relaxed real really relaxed, relaxed right I love magnesium. now there's a couple of things here that aren't normal standard ones things like rhodiola mm -hmm. is an adaptogen right there's a lot of studies on rhodiola and depression that also helps with inflammation, right? It helps mm -hmm. with memory mm -hmm. and recall on things. They've used it in medical school with medical school students and stuff. Rhodiola is a hundred to 400 milligrams a day. Okay. okay. Excuse me. You would not use rhodiola if you have a history of bipolar disorder though. Okay. Right? Yeah. It could make you manic. Wow. Right. Okay. So you're hyper. you hyper. It could make yeah. you manic, okay. not depressed, but it could make you manic. So you, so you want to be careful with that. And of course, L-theanine. Love me some theanine. Green tea, right, is loaded with L-theanine. Mm -hmm. They show like four or five cups of green tea a day will give you enough L-theanine as well to help with depression and inflammation. It's anti-inflammatory as well. It promotes alpha wave brain production. I'm sure you knew that. I don't know that. Alpha waves, delta, beta waves. Oh, tell you Lord. like where your waves, at, like when you're young, middle-aged, I mean, young to adolescence to adult, it tells you that your brain is so... Uh, in the basically like in the harmonious uh, wavelength between the left and right brain. So everything is in sync, not the band, but in sync yes. to where left and right brain are communicating well. Like it's almost like you're in a prayer mode or a meditative mode. Yeah, exactly. It reduces anxiety and supports a relaxed and focused oh, mind yeah. by creating those yeah. alpha waves. Yes. So those are the supplements, right? Mm -hmm. The B complex, the B12 the fish oil, the St. John's wort, rhodiola, L-theanine. You don't have to choose all of these. Pick one. And if I were going to pick one or two, it would be the best B complex money can buy. Yes. Because Bs, it may be all you need is a B complex to come out of this yeah, depression I and then agree. high dose yes. B12. Do you believe that? I agree because I've seen, and I know you have too, I've seen that where just one or two forms or one or two or three types of vitamin B will actually push somebody's you bet. processes to where they actually can detox and create uh, the So start with one. Don't start with the whole, get, you know, get Less up over is here. more. Less is more. Now, there's not anything out there right now, a whole lot on CBD oil, mm -hmm. but let me tell you something. What, what? Well, it decreases inflammation, right? It's yep. an anti-inflammatory, but it works on every single cell in your body. There's only one area there's no CBD receptors in your body. That's the brain stem. Wow. The brain stem controls respiration, but we know it decreases inflammation in the brain. Mm -hmm. So it makes sense to me mm -hmm. that it would help with the depression. I don't know this. There's no depression study and CBD that I can find out there, but I'm going to tell you, there's not one thing that I have used with patients in 10 years of do almost 10 years of doing this that has helped about 99.9% .9 of everyone mm -hmm. is a really high quality CBD oil. Exactly. And you do have to find Full the high spectrum. quality. You bet you do. They're not all the same, That's but we use Earth's Glory 500 milligrams, and I, I have seen unbelievable results with it. So you know that's that that is that. Those of you that are using CBD, you guys are on the forefront of y'all are trailblazers and mm -hmm. trendsetters because it has. I have never. My hip was killing me for two days. I don't know what I did to my hip. Do you know what I did? What? I went in there and put CBD just straight up on my hip when I got home from Atlanta. And did it clean it up? It doesn't hurt at all. Yeah. Not Clearly. one bit. I love CBD. I mean, it's unbelievable. Okay. Then there's some gadgets, right? What are we going to do? What about a light box? Oh, a sad okay. box, sad right? Box. Yep. Seasonal affective disorder box. Helps reset the body clock, right? 
There's, receptor, there's receptors in the back of the eye that capture the light and send the message to the brain to recalibrate your internal clock, right? There's no ultraviolet radiation from, from this at all. No. So it basically resets your circadian rhythm is what it does. I can't tell you how many patients through the years I've said, you got to go get a sad box or you got to build one or something yourself. And they like, they're like, Danny, it's the first year I went through the winter and was not depressed. Wow. That would just show the effects of how healing light is. Healing yeah. light, yeah. light, get outside people. Oh, wow. But, Maybe. but you know, if you can't get outside, we have had the worst winter I have ever seen in my life for no light. I mean, it's like we live in England, I tell you, right? It was, it was and so we, I've seen a lot of depression a lot, but I've prescribed a lot of light boxes. Oh, that's great. That's Neurofeedback, great. right? Neurofeedback. It rewires that brain yeah. and all of those signaling, right? Signaling. Yeah. I can't speak because of this. Um, I don't know anything about cranial electrical stimulation. Do you know about CES? Um, 20 minutes twice a day promotes alpha wave activity mm -hmm. and modulates the neurotransmitters, endorphins, and cortisol. Yes. They're just basically, they're putting different types of connections to your cranium and there's certain points on the head that just stimulate electrical activity in certain parts of the brain, which would then stimulate certain types of hormonal and neurotransmitter uh, increase in that area of the brain. So it's really good. And now the technology is getting to the point where they can actually assess by these points on the brain or on the cranium, like if your body is producing enough of a neurotransmitter or not. And oh, wow. And send a signal in there to help stimulate it. It's just like somebody telling you when you're really sleepy and somebody comes, Danny, 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 and you're like, stop talking to me right now. But then they wake that's up. Ella acts. And that's how it happens. What about gargling? Do you know about gargling no, and what? stimulating the vagus nerve? So Dr. Oh, I mean, Karazian, right? Dr. Dennis, Karazian yeah, who wrote, yeah. why does my brain, why is my brain broken? No, my brain's broken. I don't know. Anyway, he's the, the, the author of multiple books, but what he is, is he's a functional neurologist. He says to gargle several times a day with a glass of water, eat, gargle each sip until your eyes water. And what this does is it stimulates the vagus nerve, which runs oh. from the brain all the way down to the stomach, the vagus nerve, and encourages the gut brain harmony while improving gut motility. So if any of you have gargled before for this, let push your button, push your like button or your heart button, because I mean, good Lord, that's free. Gargle some good, clean water that's and see what do. the heck happens. Not at all. A couple times a day until, you know, your eyes start to water. <laughs> ah! All right. Have you been crying, Danny? Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. So a little bit of recap, right? Remember, all right, you're going to change your diet, yeah. right? We're going to eat an anti-inflammatory diet. First off, if you're struggling with symptoms of depression, I understand what it's like to be down in a well and so depressed that you can't see a way out. I get this. I was there. There was a season in my, my life and I completely understand how people kill themselves. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. I was there. I had two little kids at the foot of the bed. And the only reason I didn't do that was because those two kids needed to be fed and I was not about mm. oh. to leave them. And so, I get it. And it took everything in my power to get myself out of this. But the second you see a glimmer of hope, man, you've got to cling on to it because I'm telling you there's a way out of this. Right. And it's not always pharmaceuticals. Now, sometimes it is yeah, right, but it's it not always, sometimes we're dealing with an imbalance, right? And we're dealing with inflammation because we know that depression is a symptom of inflammation as well. We yeah. know that, right? You need to move your body. You've got to move what, no matter what it takes. I understand when you're so depressed that you can't get out of bed. The last thing you want to do is go to the gym, yeah. but at least just get outside, yeah. get outside, get exactly. some air, do a three minute meditation. My favorite app, well, there's two apps I love. There's um, Insight Timer, mm -hmm. Insight Timer and Headspace. Those two apps are phenomenal for two, three, four, five minute meditations, right? Just deep breathing. Even if all you do is just close your eyes and deep breathe yes. for five minutes, yes. how that resets everything. Exactly. Right. I think when you remember, always expand the diaphragm to get real geeky about it when you're bouncing chakras. 
That's right. I'm telling you, if you pull in and you breathe through here, what you're doing is you're expanding the diaphragm. We talked about vagal response. That's and right. Where the vagus nerve go to? To your diaphragm. When you expand your diaphragm, you're reconditioning your vagus nerve, which helps what? Settle basically all your autonomic system. That's helps right. Your heart regulation, your digestion, helps with your um, circulation of blood, and also helps with like, definitely they call it the dantian chi. It's in the acupuncture. It helps circulate the energy within the gut within your navel with where you got it from your parents so it's like vital force throughout your whole body wow. go ahead sorry wow yeah. no it's get a sad box if Ooh, you need one of those right get some sleep get your bedroom make it a sanctuary right get the electromagnetic fields out of there get everything yeah. out of there that's going to disrupt yeah. your environment right get a new mattress if you need one detox your environment right Ooh. so we're talking chemicals we're talking drink good water detox your products in yes. your house right those of you that have been following me you've seen me doing the toxic vagina uh, post about no more toxic vaginas and detoxing the box and all of that stuff so it's a piece of the puzzle <laughs> so if me. you didn't see Killing the text me. message that I got the other day this was from my Jackson's girlfriend sent me that text message that said oh my gosh um, all or all organic natural tampons have saved my life and no more cramping etc and so I mean it's a piece of the puzzle yeah. right and so I just ordered these. I just got these in for Ella. This is Lola. And I don't know if you guys have used Lola or not. And they're all organic pads. It says, this too shall pass. <laughs> oh, that's and awesome. until it does, that's we're so here good. for you. But they're organic pads, organic tampons. I don't know. They come on the internet. I mean, they come in the mail every month. So we're going to see. But it's a piece of it, right? If your vagina's toxic, if you're putting, um, you know, um, round up in your vagina every single month and mm -hmm. bleach in there. I mean, it stands to reason we're going to have more problems, right? And more inflammation and GYN issues and hormonal imbalances. And we know that your hormones are a piece of the puzzle of this yep. depression. So it's all connected. This is not one thing, no. right? No. It's, it, it's all connected. It's environmental and spiritual and mental and sexual. And, and I mean, and your diet, it's all, it's all connected. Cultivate feelings of gratitude, yes. right? Yes. There's a lot of studies out there on people who are more grateful, mm -hmm. have less depression, yes. less pain, yes. chronic pain, yes. right? When you cultivate a, an, a, a whole culture of gratitude, wow. thank you, Lord, thank you, Jesus, thank you, whoever your God is, right? If it's Buddha or, or Allah, thank you for dot 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 because I'm telling you right now we are so blessed and I know that all of you watching are if you own a home and you own a car you are in the top 1% of wealth yeah. doesn't mean you're not sad doesn't mean you don't have problems but I am telling you we are a blessed country yes. and I don't think we stop enough and say Thank you. Exactly. Thank you. Yeah. There's a science and psychology behind mm -hmm. gratefulness. You bet. There are so many studies about how the brain will take an idea of gratefulness. Mm -hmm. And if you cultivate it, it's true. It's just like hoeing and reaping and watering in a field. And the more you cultivate it, the more you do your work on it, the more you'll produce gratefulness. You bet. And that leads me straight to what I was going to say. You have to cultivate friendships and you have to cultivate your tribe yes. and your community. Your tribe. I That's love that. the last thing I that it. I was saying here. You've so got to schedule time with friends, right? I scheduled today, May the 11th. I'm going to be earthing and laughing with, with my friends, friends, with my oh. new friends, right? We're going to do that. But you have to take the time to do that, to yeah. cultivate gratitude, to cultivate friendships, to cultivate your tribe. It's a piece of this, right? You cultivate. This, again, is not, I love cultivation and I have a party twice a year that cultivates people together, right, out at Arrington Vineyards. And I have to be intentional about that because we have a tendency to stay in our homes or stay busy in our lives and not see people right and not stay connected but you heal when you have community you do. you do you do and so it's all a piece of it again you are not broken you are not broken this is not 
permanent. You may be depressed. Mm -hmm. You may be sad. You may have anxiety. You may have bad, bad things going on in your life right now, but this is temporary and it's a season and every season changes, yes. right? Exactly. And you've got to see that. I don't care how depressed you are. Just know that, you know, this is no surprise to God. If, if you believe in God, this is no surprise at all. He knew this was going to happen. Mm -hmm. I tell people this, you know, he knew this was no surprise, maybe a surprise to you, but this has been building. So let's fix whatever it is in your life that has led up to this. Let's fix it. Let's fix it. And, and I don't know what that takes for you. Is it changing your job? Is it getting out of a bad marriage? It very easily could be right. Yeah. It right. Is it standing up for yourself at work or putting that bully in their place or getting your, you know, stop enabling your children? Is that depressing you? I don't know what it is, but you've got to fix it you do. because it doesn't fix itself. Exactly. Just like these supplements, they don't work in the bottle for crying out loud. You got to take them. I, I agree. I think that when you cultivate the people around you, that you hang out with other people that are grateful as well that when you try to center your life, rely on yourself and the fact that you are grateful. Yes. That you ever notice that you want to be around other people that are grateful. Yes. If you're not around other people that are grateful, you have to remember everybody stays in their own lane, but you want to be in a bullseye or in a certain circle of friends that they agree and have the same expectations, not of each other. You just have the same expectations of life. And that way you're not pulling or tethering each other toward each other, but you're sort of living in an amplification, amplifying the sound, the tone of gratefulness because you have friends that are like that. You have people that are grateful. We're friends because not because what we get from each other. It's not because what I get from Danny or what Danny gets from me. We just go because we kind of have the same thoughts about life. We yeah. Just like, it just kind of builds and builds and builds. Anyway. Amen to that. So, Here's, here was my last thoughts that I had tied. You know, you're not broken again and again and again. If you have to put that on your bathroom mirror, on your car window, on your desk at work, I am not broken. I am not broken. You're not broken. Our bodies are designed to heal, right? So I was talking about, you know, what can you say? Can you say, you know, kind of introspectively, you know, why am I experiencing this health crisis, right? Why is this going on in my life? What do I need to do to fix it? Is there a message inside this experience that oh, I wow, need yeah. to learn? Is there a lesson I need to learn? I mean, I don't know. But when you really start thinking about these things, I think you can tease it out. You know, what am I meant to hear from this? You know, when something tugs on you, pull the thread. Uh, what, what did I say? Oh, yeah, you pulled the thread. And then you go wherever it leads you, right? De depression is a crisis of opportunity is oh, what Kelly Brogan said. I didn't I like say that. that. Depression is a crisis really of good. opportunity, right? Crisis of opportunity. That is so, so good. So what do we do about it? What you do you do? Got, right? That's what I mean. Right? Um, understanding what's really going on in your brain, your body, and your deepest heart, you will see that depression is a message. Okay. Yeah, right? That's telling you to course correct. Ooh. You need to turn the boat, right? Now it may take a while. If you're turning a ship, it takes a lot longer to do that than it does to flip a Porsche around. I was watching a Porsche yesterday at the track in Atlanta and I mean, woo, they go like that, right? But you can course correct this, but it takes work. It does. Everything we just talked about for the past past hour, right? And Dr. Dr. Lodog says, and for that, depression is also a profound blessing and a highly personal wake up call. Whoa. Wow. Who has looked at their depression as a blessing? Mm -hmm. I didn't. Oh. I, I didn't. I did not take the time. I thought it was just pan I was just panicked, panicked. Yeah. Why am I depressed? I'm broken. Right. Yeah. Never thinking that, Oh, Danny, you need to shift the course here. Ooh. Right. Right. Yeah. So shift if you don't you shift the that. way you think about it, exactly. shift the way it's okay to be sad. It's okay. okay. We were never promised a rose garden, never, right? Never. You don't remember that song? You're no, I do oh, know good that song. Lord. I know. But, so, yes. That being said, some of my favorite resources: A Mind of Your Own, Kelly Brogan. Right? Mm -hmm. There's a book that I haven't read that she talked about called An Anatomy of an Epidemic. Mm -hmm. Robert Whitaker. Do you know it? No. He says we have more treatment and more disability. 
right? Not only are the prescriptions not doing what we think they're doing, they cause long-term damage, right? So we have more treatment and more disability in the United States than we've ever had. More people are on pills, more people are popping pills than ever, but yet they're disabled, they're depressed, they're suicidal, something's wrong. She says this book changed everything for her, Anatomy of an Epidemic, Robert, Robert Whitaker, right? There's a website called farmedout.org, P-H-A-R-M-E-D, farmedout.org, and this is a group of medical professionals advocating on getting big pharma out of medical schools and nursing oh, schools. Oh, wow. It's a fantastic website, right? So, you, so I would say this. So we were telling me, like, when we when she just said this, like, to recap, we're saying that when she was telling you to go with the course correct, I believe you're saying, like, with depression, it's like really asking the questions why. Like, you keep digging why. Why? Why. And I think that's really good. And so anatomy of an epidemic. Yeah. Okay. That's, so, that's such a good, that's a good I apologize, study. you guys. Harlan has snored all night long. But you got this. You are not broken. We can fix this. You can fix this. But you're the only one who knows what's really going on and what the reasons are for creating this depression or anxiety. So you have to do the hard work. There are some supplements to help, right? But you've got to change the diet. you got to look deep and figure it out. Yeah. Maybe it means that if you want to wean off, then you need a provider who knows how to help you wean off. But we can fix this. You can fix this. This is not permanent. This is temporary. You have got to live the life that you were designed to live. We're just asking Period. you right now to, and I'm asking, we're asking ourselves, is that you're putting pieces of puzzles to the puzzle That's together. That's right. That's right. And when you start to get a whole view, the crazy thing is when you start getting more of a larger view, you realize you were never really broken. Yeah. Because something was telling you to put the pieces together. Like, this is how it's supposed to look. And you're like, well, why didn't I already put it together? Like, because God's telling you that I already have a whole view of you. That's right. You just look at yourself as broken. That's right. And I always ask patients, I go back and say, when was the, when did you feel the best in your life? When did you feel the happiest in your life? When did you feel the best? And I mean, we really try to bring it back to, okay, what was going on and what's happened between that time and now the crisis mode that we're in. Oh, yeah. Cause yeah. again, you don't go from, from, you know, happy to depressed instantly. It takes a while to simmer. Pay attention to the little. That's exactly right. So, guys, we love you. But listen, we have a huge surprise for next, next Saturday. No, next Sunday next night. Sunday. Next Sunday night service. Trudy Scott, who wrote the Anti-Anxiety Food Solution, will be live with us from Australia just like we did with uh, Dr. Goodman when you were out of town, right? We're going to do a split screen. She has agreed to talk about her book, The Anti-Anxiety Food Solution. And I need every single one of you on here tomorrow or Sunday night. I need you to share the post. I need you to share it as soon as it comes up because this is a big deal She's getting big Trudy dog. Scott on here. I mean, and she agreed. She said, well, I'd be honored to, Danny. And I was like, oh, my gosh. She so, called me up and told me. I was like, she doing who was what coming here? Oh, I'm so excited. What? So I'm telling you, I don't know what's happening next Sunday night, but you all need to be here at 7 o'clock. And then Dr. Dennis Goodman, who, who we've already had on here, cardiologist, he wants to come in. July the 19th and do something live at the office if you all would be willing to do that. And I'm sure there'll be a fee oh, to it, but I don't know what, but, but it's going to um, be. And fantastic. he wrote the miracle of Magne, I mean, magnificent magnesium, the thrill of krill and vitamin the K. The thrill of seven. krill? Yeah. That's the best. He wrote the thrill best. of krill. I'm, I love it. That's, yeah. That's so he wrote those three books. And if you all are open to that and you want that, just let me know, type it up there. Yes. But we love you guys. We ran over. We were going to try to make this 45 minutes tonight and I apologize. We okay. did not, but you just realize you got this. We love you. We love you. Next Sunday night, Trudy Scott, the anti-anxiety food solution. She will oh, be wow. talking all about amino acids, GABA, L-tryptophan, D-phenylalanine, L-tyrosine, L-glutamine. I mean, I am so excited in sharing her story. If you can, between now and then, buy her book and try to get it read. Because it's not that thick. It's not that thick, but it's you can read it. Read. It's no, good. it's an it's easy good. read. And it could help you tremendously. It's going to be such a fun time. And what about real quick before what's going on with your office this week? Office this week is busy, 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 busy. For those of you watching, I am not closing the practice. People, oh, people thought we closing. were. We have got phone calls, a few phone calls, emails, people canceling 
are thinking I canceled their appointments coming up that haven't even seen me yet. Absolutely not. They said the, the email misread, the, it read like I was canceling everybody's appointment that hadn't even seen me yet. So no, we're not. We're there. We're taking everybody who's on, who's already scheduled. Of course, we're going to see everybody. So we're getting the Yoni steaming and all that up and going. Ginger's getting it going. So we'll let you know as soon as possible. Oh, it's going to be great. Well, guys, we love you. We thank you so much for tuning in. We hope you have a great week. We are positive that our vibes are sending vibes out to you. Woo! Yes, we, we love you. We love day. you. Oh, we love Good you so night. much. All right, guys, have a great Sunday night. Uh, yep. Bye -bye. And go to bed early. Get go. to bed early. See you.